Okay, I taped this to the table to keep it uh, still, but you've seen this little black sketchbook I have uh, where I just, I just use it when I'm like stuck on a plane or something. Um, oh, there's my email address if you need it. And it just has the little doodles in there. A couple of randy little poems. Anyway, I've showed this to you before, but this is what I'm gonna sketch in today. Um, here, let's go here. Let's do uh, Julie from Echo today. Um, if I have time, a few minutes, I always try to um, draw Julie inside the book that I sign. Um, it's, n it's not all the time that I can do that, of course, but... Uh-oh, I need to move my book now because I want to get the angle. Now, I want to be drawing straight on the angle. I, don't, I can't figure it out from... If I'm here and the buck is like that, I don't want to try to draw that. So I straighten it up so I'm on the angle. So um, you saw the porch that I was sitting on and last night I was on that porch and I saw a meteor. And I knew it was a meteor because it just showed up from out of nowhere and was going down at an angle. And it was a green and white light that just burned out quickly. And I read that, you know, uh, fire looks green in our atmosphere when you do that, you know, um, when they're coming down through the upper atmosphere or something. So, looks like she has a mustache. I think one of the uh, easiest ways to draw these kind of things is go ahead and make your mistakes. And it's easier to fix a mistake than it is to draw it from scratch. So it's easier for me to draw that mouth wrong and then fix it than it is to like draw the perfect mouth right here in the middle of nothing, right? So that's what all the extra lines are about. That's why you see all these extra scratchy lines. That's just somebody stabbing at it, thinking, okay, I think the forehead's in here somewhere. Um, I think the hairline is in here somewhere. You know, that's what you're doing. You're just, you're just laying it out. Like if you were going to uh, lay stuff out on a table and you're just kind of putting place markers down, that's what this is, is right now. And I'm thinking, okay, the hair's in here somewhere. Okay, I need to lean forward. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna go with it. Um, it really matters where you put that eye, that part of the eye. If you move it back or, you know, the white, the relationship of the white to the eye makes so much difference where she's looking, whether she's looking straight or over here to the angle or right at you. Man, it makes so much difference. So you can play with it, you know, with your pencil and eraser and just keep moving that part right there or fattening it up and you watch how the expression changes. I uh, don't have time to show all that right now. We'll do stuff, something like that when I get back to the drawing board. Right now I'm drawing on a kitchen table. And even though there's no Adam's apple, there is still a, um, a swooping curve to Julie's neck. Um, you know, the guys would have an Adam's apple right there and it'd be a sharp thing, but on, there's still an esophagus in there, right? There's still a tube. <laughs> so you gotta allow for that. And then you dip in here for the, what Dracula called the Abdullah Omblagata, um, right there where it, these two tendons meet and then they form that little, um, pretty, really pretty little valley in there. Dracula was really horny for that. And then it helps to have a little bit of shadow in here to help define where that jawbone actually is. Because the jawbone is not down here. The jawbone is actually like right there going straight for that chin. And um, everything from the bottom of the jawbone across the bottom of the skin span right here, that's like, you know, a tent, upside down tent, 
um, it helps to, that's what that shadowing is all about. So it gives her a strong jaw look, but she still had, if you actually drew her thing up here like this and didn't have that, that's what you get. Not very, not exactly the way I draw. So I like to have a little extra weight right there. And the wind is blowing. This is one of those ma majestic, I'm gonna stand on the front of the Titanic moments and let the wind blow through my hair. I'm very jealous of anybody who can stand on the front of the Titanic and let the wind blow through their hair because as you might imagine, I have no hair. So I would pay upwards of $100 to stand on the front of the Titanic and let the wind blow through my hair. And I'm coloring that in which I probably shouldn't have done, but I just want to see where the hair is. In this episode, Julie's hair is more brown. Chest out with a little pride, shoulders back. More like a, you know, warrior. Rib cage right there. And there's actually a shadow here. It's a very soft shadow, but I can't do it with a pencil because now it looks like she needs to shave. So you end up, as a, if a, as a line artist, you just end up putting some indicators there like that. If you're a painter, you go for it. You get in there and there's a little bit of a dark spot right there. And now you have to be careful. Now you're setting the entire body type right here. So what kind of body type do we have? And I just went for strong. And then right here is her emblem. Kind of the fee emblem. The fee emblem is like that. And that's what's on her chest. And then when I'm doing the sketches in the, in the Echo Book, um, I always put these pellets of the alloy raining down from the explosion above. It was just, you know, one of the defining moments of the story. And it's how she got all of that on her skin. And so you make these little marks here and here's where all the alloy is. And it started with the top, the breastplate, you know, because the armor team seems to start with the torso with the breastplate. And that's kind of it. I could clean all this up and make it really tight, but that's my rough sketch. And it only took me, a, you know, four minutes to do it, five minutes to do it. And it's ready to be tightened up and use a real pencil, you know, the thicker pencil, or just get in there with the ink and do it. So I'll, do, I'll deal with that maybe on the plane ride home today. Thanks. You guys have a good time, and I'll see you next week.